Hello guys, welcome back to the 7 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily 7 Engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to answer one important question and that is that why beam is, is always, why beam always is greater depth, greater depth than the width of the beam. So we are going to why beam always greater depth than width. So we are going to answer this question in a very simple and easy way. So why beam is always greater depth? For example, D is depth is always greater than that of the width of the beam if B is the width of the beam. So what is the reason or logic behind this? So I'm going to explain this with a very simple example so you can understand it in a very simple and easy way. So for example, this is any kind of beam you see here, a reinforced, steel reinforced concrete beam and we have here the length of the beam which are represented by L. This is the width of the beam which are represented by B and then I represent the depth of the beam which is by D. So these are three dimensions of a reinforced concrete column. Now the question is, if this length of the beam remains constant, if this remains constant, then what, what factors influence the capacity of the beam? Why we always have a lower beam? And why we always have a greater depth of the beam in structural engineering? What is the main logic behind this? So if I consider here a very simple beam like this one, but in a free body diagram, and if I load this beam, this is a beam similarly here is loaded. And also I loaded here in the free body diagram. So what will happen? It will bend like in this way. Now this bending is due to the loading. And if you have higher resistance to the loading, it will bend lower. If you have lower resistance to the load, then it will bend more. So it means there is something in this beam that affects the bending of the beam. So what is this factor? This factor of the beam is known as flexural rigidity. Flexural rigidity. Or flexural stiffness represented by EI. So what is this flexural rigidity? It plays an important role in increasing the movement capacity of the beam. The, it provides the resistance basically to the applied load. If you higher, if you higher EI value, it is higher, then what happened? The, then you have here higher movement capacity of the beam. And if you have higher movement capacity, you have lower deflection or deformation. So the total deformation or deflection depending on this property which I call it a flexural rigidity or flexural stiffness of the beam. Now in this factor EI, if I look to this EI, E is basically the elastic modulus of the material of which the beam is made elastic modulus in E. E is always constant. For example, if I use it, the same reinforcement still here, so then E is constant for this beam. So E will be constant. It's not playing role in changing its capacity. So the one parameter that affects this capacity is I here, which is a moment of inertia, which is moment of inertia. Second moment of inertia and this I depends on the shape of the object. For example, here you see a rectangular beam. So its capacity or the moment of inertia will be equal to the BH cube divided by 12. So now if we look to this case, I equal to BH cube divided by 12. So now if I look to this equation, we see here that B is only has one power while H has three power. H means the depth of the beam which I represented here by D. So I will make it D so it will be easier for you guys to understand. So it is D cube or D cube here. So now here my I, my I is directly proportional to the width of the beam. If I increase the 
if I increase the width of the beam, what will happen if I increase this width of the beam here, my moment of inertia will increase. And if this increases, what will happen? The flexure rigidity will increase and the whole moment capacity will increase and we will have lower deformation or lower deflection. But in another case, if we consider the depth of the beam, you see here the moment of inertia is proportional to the depth of the beam but power of 3. So if I consider if only the width of the beam is considered 2 times, so moment of inertia is, will also be proportional to 2 times. But if I consider the width of the beam is increased, the depth of the beam is increased by 2 times, here is power of 3, where 2 power of 3, 2 power of 3 is equal to the, if you put this in calculator, it has become 8. So now it means that the moment of inertia is 8 times higher, not 2 times only. So you can see the effect of the depth of the beam is 3 times higher than that of the width of the beam and increasing the what and increasing the flexure capacity of the beam so the flexure capacity or the bending stiffness of the beam is more related to the depth of the beam rather than the width of the beam so this is the main important reason by choosing a higher depth because it will give you a very higher capacity if in comparison to that of the wider beam so hope you guys understand the main reason that why beam has always greater depth because it because the moment of inertia is more increasing by changing the depth of the beam not by width of the beam you see here the capacity of the beam is more with the depth of the beam rather than the width of the beam so hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos thank you for watching our video